Welcome back, San Diego. I hope that you enjoyed that little information about our club and why it's so important. Um, a little bit about our history and what has brought uh, mushrooms to San Diego and including the fact that maybe now you'll have a little better perspective on what you're finding out there. Um, next, it's going to be a pleasure to introduce uh, the president of NAMA from the North American Mycological Association, um, Barbara Chang. Welcome. Um, Barbara's going to be... Barbara's going to be talking to us a little bit more about NAMA, the same thing that, you know, we just went through our history. This is going to be about the history of the North American Mycological Association. There's around 80 little affiliated clubs all over, just like here in San Diego, all over North America. And this is kind of like the umbrella of what keeps all these societies together. Just now that as we're going back through Zoom, you will have so many more opportunities to go out and scope out um, different areas of the country and what mushrooms they have to offer. But um, I would love for you guys to really pay attention to NAMA because um, they're, they're the ones, the mycelial connection that bring us together. Um, and just a little bit on Barbara. She is the NAMA president. She's going to be going into her third year. Um, I've had the pleasure of, of uh, meeting uh, Barbara both at um, the foray for NAMA, which she'll tell you a little bit more about over in the Pacific Northwest, as well as the Mycelial Mysteries out in Wisconsin when it was a group gathering of women, um, around 200 women, um, just talking about mushrooms. So uh, she's been teaching classes. She's a professor in Iowa, lives in Iowa and Ames. And um, one of her little fascinations about mushrooms was when she was younger, um, her grandmother used to make a lot of mushroom uh, dishes, but they were all canned mushrooms. And still there was a fascination and a love for them. Um, so a lot of the people get interested in mushroom forging from the grandmothers, but this was all about cooking. And throughout time and foraging and going out to nature, she got to explore and learn more about mushrooms and um, worked her way up and now she's the president making amazing things for NAMA. So thank you so much, Barbara, again, for joining us. And um, I'd love to hear more about, about NAMA. Thank you, Michelle. It's exciting to be here in San Diego, more or less. I wish I really was there. Um, so thank you for having me. And I'm glad to have this audience to tell you more about the North American Mycological Association. Michelle's already told you it's an association of clubs and your club here in San Diego is one of our affiliated clubs. Um, and this pooling of resources we can do as a umbrella organization with clubs around the nation allows us to do a lot of really fun things and a lot of really important things. And I'll talk about that more uh, later, but in the meantime, I want you, to, I want to share some, some information about NAMA's history and really emphasize the resilience we have, just like your club here in San Diego has. COVID has really showed us um, that we're very resilient and we can think of ways to carry on with our mission of learning more about fungus and making more friends, uh, no matter what. I'm going to share a screen for a few minutes because um, there's a lot of information and I want to get it right. Um, and it's reading it will help you absorb it too. Uh, organization started in 1959 and fascinatingly enough, it was a sort of government initiative to support clubs and groups and uh, kind of educational fun gatherings put together by people wherever they live. Uh, so it's NAMA started as the People to Com People Committee on Fungi in 1959. Um, and it was, as you can see, if I, if I move the screen a little bit, you might be able to read more of it yourself even, but um, this was an initiative that Dwight Eisenhower started. Uh, 
to encourage international friendship, but also clearly within the nation, within the United States, too, putting people together to explore common interests, learn things, do things. Um, it's It definitely sounds very Cold War era, um, People to People Committee on Fungi, and Harry Knighton uh, and Elsie Knighton, uh, the founders, um, stayed with NAMA when it became an independent organization. And to this day, we give the Harry and Elsie S. Knighton Award each year at our annual gathering, the annual foray, to a NAMA member who has done exemplary service for their clubs. Um, so uh, somebody who's an excellent volunteer for their club affiliated with NAMA. So we NAMA forms a committee to take nominations and do this award every year. Uh, NAMA and all the affiliated clubs are volunteer run. We really are people to people. And we've managed to do this uh, Zoom to people too. Uh, an example as, as your annual mushroom fair, really a good example of NAMA's resilience. So we have been active for 70, roughly 70 years and persisted uh, year after year, even in this year when it first seemed like we are, weren't going to be able to do anything. We had to cancel our annual foray, for example. But let's talk about that now. That's our big event every year, is a foray, a na national foray. Um, it's, again, the strength of combined resources, people to people and club to club, allow us to put on a foray every year, different location, um, but last several days. And the site selection is based on the on high hopes and strong probabilities of finding a lot of mushrooms. My favorite part of a foray is the mushroom identification process and mushroom identification tables. So, um, but first I probably should tell you more about places we've held recent forays. Last year, we had planned to have our foray in the Ozark foothills, a little bit southwest of St. Louis, but because of COVID, we had to cancel. It was an October foray. Uh, that is the best time to find mushrooms in the Midwest in the fall. There is that burst of morels early spring, but fall is the most abundant and most variety of mushrooms in the Midwest. We're hoping, and the Missouri Mycological Society, um, known as MOMS, will, was going to co-host that foray, and um, we hope we can do it in 2022, reschedule it in 2022. In 2021, vaccinations permitting, we will be hosting the annual foray in outside of Estes Park in the Rocky Mountains, and the Colorado Mycological Society will be very involved in helping to organize and um, host there. That will be in mid-August. And it's it's looking, I, I have some optimism about uh, the vaccines um, making it possible for us to attend and host this foray. So that's our plan for the next two years. We have been vouchering the for the mushrooms we have found at our forays for many years. This is another por important part of our history is advancing mycology throughout the North American my continent. And we have hosted forays in Canada before. And Michelle and I are going to do our best to make sure we can have a foray in Mexico soon. So because, again, our name is North American Mycological Association. Back to the vouchering. We're very involved in identifying the mushrooms of our continent, right? Uh, the European mushrooms are very well documented. We're a younger country, a vaster country, and our voucher program, uh, and a voucher is a record, uh, if you're familiar with how herbariums work, plants are vouchered in herbariums, is um, proof that a mushroom was found and identified in such and such place on such and such a day. 
And the dried specimen and spore print is preserved along with that. Um, we'll be doing a program, by the way, in February about um, the vouchers that George Washington Carver deposited at the Iowa State University Herbarium Fungarium while he was a student here. So vouchers are historical in any number of ways about who was finding them when, where, documenting that such and such a mushroom does does appear in such and such a place. We've been doing this for years, as I, as I say, with records of what we found in every place we have uh, hunted for mushrooms. And, and these are all um, at the Field Museum. So we've been doing this for years. But before they end up as dried specimens at the Field Museum, we lay them out at table after table after table at the foray. As they come in, after each day's forays. It is my favorite thing of all to do at the foray and just such a great example of what people to people, uh, the us in fungus, so to speak, uh, do when they uh, get together and hunt for mushrooms and share what they find. You can walk along these tables and they don't put duplicates out. There'll be table after table of mushrooms that were brought in, identified by the mycologist in chief and the other mycologists present and mycology students who identify and label, put them out on tables and you can walk by and see real examples of mushrooms you may have only looked at in books before when we all go out in the woods together and come back together and identify them. So it's one of the great educational and fun things we do at Forays. We also have lectures if you have ideas for a lecturer you would like to see, a presenter you would like to see, or an activity you would like to see at the annual foray, let me know. My email is easy, president at N-A-M-Y-C-O dot org, president at namico dot org. Um, so that's a little bit of our history and our future. We're involved in the, the uh, North American Microflora Project. They're now calling themselves the Fundus uh, a nonprofit group working to create a document of the fun, fungi that we can find in North America. So we have a important future ahead of us. Uh, in addition to all the fun we can have year after year after year, but this important future in helping document the the the, the macro fungi, the microflora, whatever we want to call them, of North America. NAMA also has a public service component and uh, giving back to communities is, is always important, I think, uh, in any kind of organization, people to people. Um, fungophobia is a thing, right? Um, um, one of the reasons I think I was not taught how to look for mushrooms at an early age was that fear of I'd put anything and everything in my mouth, right? That's what little kids do. Um, so we uh, identify um, identifiers, let me put it that way. We maintain a list of people in every state who can help identify toxic mushrooms in really scary emotional situations. Yes, of course, toddlers will you know put anything in their mouth, but most frequently we hear from upset pet owners. It's whose dog or cat seems to have eaten a mushroom, maybe having some kind of gastric dis distress. We often hear from veterinarians as well for guidance on how to figure out what mushroom was eaten, if it's poison, what kind of poison, because poisoning is a spectrum of feeling sick for a day or two to uh, needing to get to the emergency room right now. Um, so, it's a sort of counseling service, uh, first, uh, at least in the first encounter, um, but a way to help people who, of course, want to save their pets or their child. Um, or, uh, you know, we often hear from college students who are now suddenly are concerned about the mushrooms they just ate, that kind of thing. So um, helping get the word out helping get the word out in a timely manner, help getting advice, counseling, putting in touch with an identifier is something we do. And every year, Michael Bug, who is our toxicology chair, 
puts together a report of poisonings that we that have been brought to our attention that have come to our attention either because we've talked to the person who wants to report it and know what to do about it or we hear about it from veterinarians or, so uh, trying to help people who have had a bad encounter with mushrooms is one of the important things we do through uh, reporting but also, on another screen, you can see a list of identifiers. So if you're in San Diego, um, you can see if there is a veterinarian or a pharmacist or a mycologist who has some experience and can give you some next steps to take. There are very few actual deaths by mushroom poisoning, by the way, on a year-to-year -year basement basis. Keep in mind that you know, from an upset stomach to death, is the spectrum of things we would call toxic reactions or poisoning. So it would be great if you joined NAMA. Uh, if, if you're a member of the San Diego Club, you can join with a $5 discount because your club is uh, already a NAMA member. And in return, you will he get, get word right away when you, registration for the National Foray is open. You must be a member to attend. Uh, often the red the, the foray fills up, so getting a timely uh, invitation to register is a valuable thing. You also get our bi monthly publication, which we call a newsletter. It's more like a magazine because we email out announcements of upcoming events like Zoom meetings or Zoom presentations, and you'll get invitation to those Zoom presentations. And they're either free or um, maybe five or ten dollars. Thank you for showing that cover. Exact, you can see that the cover is more like a magazine. Photography is a big uh, interest of of our organization. We have many members who are excellent photographers. We have a photography contest each year. We try to put members' artwork and photography on the cover here of the Mica file. So you get that Mica file six times a year. You get invitations to the foray and to register for the foray and to the Zoom events, which is something we just started this year. Um, an example of our resilience, our commitment and just urge to stay in touch and uh, with fungi and with each other. So uh, I really encourage you to, in, to join and to volunteer, get involved. If you want to get more involved in producing a journal in writing, and sharing your photography. You can get involved in any of these things. Uh, we have a photography committee as well. Um, help us plan forays. Help us uh, put together our Zoom programming. We have any number of committees and ways for you to volunteer. Um, and I encourage you to do it. I, and I can say that we have a lot of fun just even getting in, in meeting. It's, you'll make friends too. Uh, you're going to learn more, find more fun guy, and you'll make friends. Well, how I know Michelle from getting together for, manga, for, for fungos, mushroom events. And how I'm glad to know Cassandra now too. But uh, there's just... It's a way to stay in touch with mushrooms all year. Your season in San Diego is starting soon, and I bet it's ending soon, too. That's how it feels uh, where I live in Iowa. From the first morel to the last maitake, that's a short fraction of the year. So uh, NAMA will keep you doing uh, and immersed in something you really enjoy year-round. You can also join other affiliate clubs. Uh, Michelle, are you in other clubs besides the San Diego Club? Um, yes, in LA and then as a group, we've decided to start um, joining all our California clubs, you know, because we're trying to, if we're going to in the future change legislature or bring like um, the mushroom, last year we voted on a state mushroom. And yes. so we would like to start um, again, increasing the environmental awareness and we're yes. going to be more profitable if we can do it um, as a that's a whole state. So great. We definitely yeah. want to support. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm in the Minnesota mushroom club and I joined the Missouri club and I've gone to, that's a border state uh, from Iowa. I've gone to some of their events. Uh, California is a big state, but as you know, if you're in a small state, 
you might want to join your neighboring states clubs too, so that you can go to more forays during your own mushroom season. Um, you, you probably do ID at your own forays too, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. And the Minnesota club, which is the club which is actually closest to me, there is an Iowa club, but um, the part of Iowa I'm in is an easy drive to the Twin Cities. Um, there's mushroom, there's identification sessions every Monday night during mushroom season. And that's, that's fun too. Do, and do you do that? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And one of the things too, um, when we do our, um, our forays and usually, especially for the fair, we would have experts come from LA or even sometimes, um, Bob Cummings from Santa Barbara, who's spoken at our club a bunch. He's mm -hmm. the one who knows most about toxicology. So we already, since, um, Southern California, it doesn't have as much, um, as many mushrooms as in other places so we, uh, people will drive to to forays when, when whenever we can yeah. find them yeah yes yes so you can go to more forays if you join an affiliate club too or just ask if you can come just this once and then <laughs> see if you see if you join yeah and, and having noted uh identifiers or mycologists right it's like meeting a rock star some you know like when you were a teenager right now, uh, you know, it'd be like, uh, I'll meet Noah Siegel, I hope someday soon. It'd be like, you know, when I was 16, if I met Neil Young or something, I'm dating, I'm, I'm dating myself there. So you get to meet the myco mycologist and ask them things you've always wondered or get help with this one mushroom you've never been able to identify. So really lots of benefits to being in a local and um, a national organization. Yeah, especially now, like I was saying, Zoom, we're, we're going to be able to talk to each other a lot more. Yeah. But that is one of the greatest things about the NAMA 4 So I hope those watching will eventually make it to one of them because yeah. you're getting such a wide variety of people of amazing T-shirts that everybody brings uh, from all the years. Yes, yes. The club. Yes, yes. Um, the wealth of knowledge from you know the young kids that some people bring their kids to some people it's that, so fun when you know, there's young kids like in their mm -hmm. yes i've met so many amazing children um on forays too you know young kids who know all these mushrooms already and they're so excited that's it's great too and i guess this is a good time you know to sum it up the events are family friendly family friendly for the most part uh, there's usually nice playgrounds at the foray sites there's been some that don't have them and swimming pools if it's that time of year so yeah they're family good kind of vacation events too yeah yeah and we thank you for all your work that you're putting together. It is a lot of work. We know from our board yes. um, how much yeah. it takes, you know, to put all of this together. But at the end, we're really having the same focus about helping educate people about yeah. mushrooms, about the environment um, and how to do it in a way that, you know, that people love. Yes, yes. And a couple quickly mentioned how to cultivate mushrooms. We usually have a workshop or two about that at 4 Ace if you want to grow mushrooms at home or in your yard. Um, and but micro remediation, maybe how to use mushrooms to restore damage sites um, or learning about that. And there is some public policy we need to interact with as well, uh, as Michelle mentioned making sure we have places that we can look for mushrooms uh, is, is becoming a, an important thing. So I'm so glad to be here. I hope to hear from some of you and see you, uh, see you at a foray. And uh, let me know if you have any questions or comments as well. Thanks. Yes, thank you so much. We'll put up the little blurb about NAMA. Um, so you will find out where you can register, but again, it's filled with contest and information and committees and Dyer's clubs. So please check them out. Um, thank you so much again, Barbara. It was such a pleasure to see you. Thank you everyone. Have fun. This place has mushrooms coming out, it's everything. 
It's like a theme park of mushroom hunting. The mushrooms are as beautiful as a wildflower and more exciting to find because, you know, you might be the first person in the last 35 years that ever saw that there. A lot of them I know from books, and they're arriving in the flesh on those tables in multiples. At the 2017 Nama Northwoods Foray up here in northern Wisconsin, we've had been having a, a complete blast. Nama represents the largest group of collectors, amateur mycologists, professional mycologists and people just interested in general in mushroom forming fungi. It's really exciting at a NAMA event because it is such a blending of people with such varied interests and such varied skill levels. Some are college professors, some are self-taught. Lots of people working at different universities or herbarium that I get to, to meet and actually talk to. I've read their books, I've read their papers. So NAMA is a great place to interact with people and learn from them. I was blown away by the different uh, if you want mushroom cultures that I discovered at Nama. It's kind of a big interconnected web like mycelium. There are discussions about so many issues. So it's not just toxicology and it is not just taxonomy and it is not just cooking with wild mushrooms. Everything comes together. And I've always wanted to have some kind of like little recording system that recorded all the conversations at Nama Foray and wrote them up because there's so much information exchanged. When uh, an expert in a group of mushrooms is really not sure what they're looking at because they're seeing it for the first or second time, that's when things get really exciting. I think it's important to study fungi because they're everywhere and they're holding everything together. Then you start seeing the connections of mushrooms and green plants and mushrooms and insects and all the interactions, uh, ecological interactions. And a lot of understanding of environmental stability comes from gaps in our knowledge and a huge gap can be the fungi because fungi are incredibly diverse and all of that diversity represents different individual roles that fungi can have and play in terms of stabilizing the environment and contributing to the health of ecosystems. There's a whole resurgence of folks interested in getting out into the woods now, into the forest. What is nature? What's our role here on the planet? And what role does fungi play? Once people start to learn about mushrooms, they realize that there's it's sort of the biological frontier. We think that probably we've described about 5 or 6% of the total fungal diversity on Earth. So that's what keeps me going. I can come here and I can see things I've never seen before at a foray like this. People come here to listen to lectures, go to workshops on cultivating, and learn about identification of mushrooms. But we know the real reason they're here. It's to pick and eat wild mushrooms. The chanterelle soup was my favorite. Pick the pickles in of the woods, Rimpola frondosa. I like the mataki tea. Mycology brings people together out of the fear of getting poisoned, basically. That's the, that's the real truth of the matter. Mycology also brings people together because we share common knowledge. If you're interested in mycology, there's no better way to, to learn and to be inspired than to come to a foray like the Nama foray. The best way to learn a mushroom is to see it in person, to have someone at a foray say, well, that's what it is, and it looks like this, and you have the other mushroom there to put the two together, and so you know this is edible, this is poisonous. And while they look a little bit alike, seeing them together with an expert to talk about them is a really a good way to learn them. And I'm before you have 200, 300 people, so you get exposed to lots of different aspects of how people are interested and interact with mushrooms and weird fungi that you never knew about and they know how to find them. Folks who are interested in fungi should join a local club. NAMA has 80 affiliated clubs and learn from the local club and then extend their knowledge by joining NAMA. Joining a mushroom club was a great way to start, but coming to NAMA, you have amazing individuals that are doing a lot in the world of fungi. One of the beauties of NAMA is that it's in a different place every year. You know, it's always nice to see some different mushrooms that you've never, never seen. I think mushroom people mostly just want to be in the woods. I do. When you go in the woods, you feel extremely peaceful all of a sudden. I would love to come back to NAMA um, year after year. It's really a very synergistic kind of gathering where there's a lot of people who know a lot of things about a lot of different things. And so we can all learn from each other and find out what's here and, and what fungi do and what they are and what the different kinds of species are. Just as long as I can spread my spores, that's great.